All right, so uh, from Johnny, we now heard like the big picture, what companies should do. I will now go down more, maybe even to your daily tasks, what you are challenging on everyday basis. Uh, there is actually uh, a guy, author of the books, uh, Bob Hoffman. Uh, he actually called himself not thought leader, but thought destroyer. And he actually wrote a book, marketers are from Mars, but consumers are from New Jersey. And sometimes this kind of illustrates the thing that we sometimes are looking for the next big thing. Uh, we are kind of like, we know LinkedIn, uh, as Johnny mentioned, like e even for finding internal people at companies, sometimes it's easier to go to LinkedIn than to some internal tools. Uh, but still we are looking for something more. And of course on the market, there are things where AI now is booming, etc. But of course, sometimes it's a question if we can use it on everyday basis. There is, for example, uh, from Tailspin a company, uh, there is uh, this kind of a simulator when you can uh, when you can be trained actually to fire people. Yeah, so it's a virtual reality. You put a headset on and you can train managers to experience how is it for the first time, for example, to fire some of your subordinates. It's already on the market. Uh, there is, for example, this thing guy unbiased, yeah, which is kind of a robot, really like a bust, uh, which is doing the interview instead of you yeah, with the intention to be unbiased, yeah, let's say. Uh, imagine that, for example, at, at Good Call, we right at our company, we created this device uh, based on face recognition, which is also on the back end, uh, there is the AI technology. And you can see from the inside, there are some internal things. And with this tool, we are able to recognize people so this is MC of one conference he took like a selfie of himself and he was recognized by the by the LinkedIn picture there are LinkedIn pictures inside the device let's say this way and as you can see he was recognized with 80 uh, 98.2 percent similarity so it's already possible and if you want to try this now there are tools like for example PIM eyes where you can literally take pictures of people in the street like I took a picture actually even from the side here of the person you probably know here from the market and this tool will actually tell you and find you other pictures uh, of this person yeah but not only just the pictures but really the pictures with his face I actually tried this here on the spot I took a picture from this very corner right here of Johnny standing here and if you don't know, for example, Johnny, or if you don't know some speaker, if you don't know this is networking event, I, take an, I can take a picture. And Johnny, actually, your pictures may be down to high school. <laughs> yeah. So imagine if, and we as people, of course, if you have like, if you have really like a zero digital footprint on, to, on the internet, this will not find anything, that's, that's clear. Uh, but we can say the trend is that we put more and more things uh, on, the, on the internet, etc. So it's, it's, as you can see, it's working really well. So now I will do, uh, I will go down to more like things which you experience on everyday basis. I took it like from the perspective of the problems we are experiencing. Maybe uh, you don't know if you have a chance to fill roles you have dedicated to you. That might be like the proper uh, question for you. You don't have enough candidates. Yeah, that's usually, especially here on our market with practically the lowest unemployment rate in the world, that's, that's usually the problem. I cannot keep up with my tasks. I have a lot of to do. I need to approach candidates on LinkedIn, here and there, interviews, etc., etc. And finally, candidates don't respond to me. Yeah, if you are in IT, that's usually, for example, at my trainings, if you ask IT recruiters, what's your biggest challenge? The IT guys, they don't respond to me. Yeah, that's the problem. So of course there are, there are like more problem, problems in general you experience, these are probably the major ones, but of course there are things like uh, declined offers and these, these kind of things. So the first thing, uh, if you don't know, if you can fill the roles dedicated to you, what you should do, use data-oriented recruitment and sourcing. Uh, this is uh, actually latest data from our database for IT roles where in some month we placed uh, 47 candidates, IT guys, this is IT guys. And as you can see for the task we needed to approach actually over 15,000 people. Yeah. LinkedIn of course, 75% maybe LinkedIn, but other sources uh, 
you will you will see later on when we recalculate it actually to one placement you can see that it's over 3,000 people so we need to approach over 3,000 uh, 3, people to get that one higher which is really like kind of harsh uh, when you when you have a recruiter and the recruiter is not experienced with IT it's kind of like okay so that's that's quite a lot the problem is that uh, when we when we break down the funnel we can see the problem is on the offer stage where we actually need to give two offers to get that one placement that wasn't so much before uh, before COVID, for example. That's why we need to push uh, push more people into the funnel uh, uh, in the top line, and that's creating these numbers so high. Yeah, so this is from data crude from our system. So then, of course, this is creating a challenge. If you are a recruiter, you, for example, know this, you have some of your sourcers you are maybe managing, uh, then you can create these assumptions uh, when you know that you, as a recruiter, you need, for example, seven interviews to get that one placement, yeah, which is uh, in the middle column. And you know that your sourcer is normally doing 19 people approach, like, or we call it like put in a long list, from that uh, the person, the sourcer is ab uh, able to generate one interview you can recalculate that you need from the sourcer to approach 133 people on average to get that one higher based on this you can plan the capacity maybe you can plan that I have a part-time sourcer he's not uh, able to do these numbers so maybe I need two sourcers yeah so uh, this is this this should be some benchmark and some data with you should know then you can skip to talent mapping uh, and figure out if it's actually possible to uh, to pursue these numbers on that market yeah, maybe it's not Czech Republic maybe you're looking for the candidates in Hungary or Romania or somewhere else uh, so you can, we can say that with LinkedIn, you can do a lot of things, including talent mapping, including things uh, where you can decide based on them, based on them, if you open a branch, for example, in that country. We normally do it as a service for our clients. We, we give them a report based on that. They are deciding, yeah, okay, let's open the branch, for example, in Norway. Yeah? Or let's open the vacancy in our branch in Norway. Uh, or you can find, for example, how many people are there on the market. That's, that's clear, but you can, for example, also figure out which company uses which technology yeah? because when you see that there are quite a lot of Python developers in this company probably the company uses Python all these things uh, are seizable actually from LinkedIn you can find which companies are hiring which companies are firing just based on how people uh, are skipping and coming joining the company on LinkedIn for that, you can uh, use many things. Uh, one thing uh, which you can use when you have the full license of LinkedIn recruiter, uh, you can go into the search breakdown. So you can do the search. I did a search in Germany here, and I put into skills. In this phase, I can I can do that. When I have enough results, I have over 20,000 results, so it's okay for, for the talent mapping. And I put their Azure, yeah, the Microsoft Technology Azure. So I have over 21,000 people with Azure technology, and I can see in Germany, Germany, what are the top companies actually employing these people on the market so suddenly I have a quick snapshot of what my competition on the talent acquisition uh, basis actually what, what is my competition there uh, I can see the maturity of the market how many uh, years of experience those people have so all these factors might uh, might play a role for the management to decide if actually open a branch for example here or the development vacancy itself. You can, for example, find out from which studies and universities some group of people are. Sometimes it's obvious, yeah, probably like developers will be from technical schools. Sometimes it can be less obvious yeah, from, from which schools and field of studies are recruiters, for example. So you can get a snapshot what recruiters in Germany, for example, studied. If you want to find out who's hiring, who's firing on a particular market, uh, there is a good way which to use on LinkedIn, which is not uh, actually a LinkedIn recruiter, but account called LinkedIn Sales Navigator, uh, where in Sales Navigator, there is actually extended search of companies yeah you cannot find it anywhere else you cannot find it in linkedin recruiter and as you can see i put here that i'm looking in germany i'm looking for automotive companies 
uh, I'm looking for companies uh, over 51 employees and I'm looking for companies whose headcount actually uh, decreased by at least 10% in the last six months, one year or two years. So you can quickly get a view on the market and you can see companies who are for some reason losing people because this is literally measured based on people on LinkedIn. So LinkedIn of course knows that suddenly this company is losing people. Yeah. So all of these can be done just with LinkedIn. We didn't even skip somewhere else. When you, uh, when you check a particular company, you can see actually the chart, uh, the curve of the, of the headcount, and uh, you can actually do this also based on departments. So I can see automotive companies in Germany who are firing people or hiring people, for example, in sales department. Based on that, you can do some assumptions. So that's uh, data-oriented recruitment. Number two, I don't have enough candidates. I would say maximize, maximize long, links, uh, long list. So sometimes you know that the pipeline might be weak because there are not enough candidates on the market. But sometimes it's about the ability how you can squeeze actually the particular channel, whether it's LinkedIn or maybe whether it's something else. It all starts with LinkedIn. We can also read it maybe like IT uh, starts with LinkedIn uh, as well. But in this case, as you can see, like a simple search, uh, I'm looking for JavaScript and React.js, which normally for a front-end developer would be probably in the requirements. Yeah, but when you don't know the IT terminology properly, you don't know what are really the relations between these uh, IT terms, you would put search like this. We cannot say it's, it's incorrect but there might be a, some other recruiter who might find more people still really relevant but more people and that might be uh, that might be the difference that the other recruiter will be more successful so in this case i would just put the react js because when you know react js is a framework based on javascript so why to force our results to have both of these terms uh, on linkedin profile it doesn't make any sense if they have react.js it means it falls back down to that they know javascript as well they don't necessarily need to have it on their profiles of course when we go uh, more into detail you should also put there some other variations of the react.js how it's written usually on uh, people's profiles. So this would be like more exhaustive search. As you can see, we went from 3,800 results to 5,500 results. So the, the percentage different, uh, difference is uh, quite significant. Some other examples of, uh, of sourcing, searching actually, behavioral sourcing on Twitter, which might be quite easy now because you can use, for example, people search, where you can put, for example, DevOps, you can put the location, I put their Prague, and I'm looking for Twitter bios. The good thing about this is that, that you not only find people based on keywords, you can do that, uh, for example, with Google, yeah, that's, that's not a rocket science, but those people here in the list are sorted based on the number of followers. So basically now I see the, the three major influencers for DevOps in Prague on Twitter. There might be chance that if I find, uh, let's say, mutual followers of, for example, these two people on the top, that those people will be also DevOps engineers. The thing is that on Twitter, many of those profiles are really brief. Yeah? People don't put their much information, for example, as they do on LinkedIn. You can use TweetDiff, where you can put two or more Twitter profiles and you can compare their followers and it will tell you, in this case, for example, what's the shared connection or followers of me and Mati Matoli. These people will probably be also from talent acquisition because Mati and I, we are from talent acquisition, but it doesn't mean that these people have something some keywords connected with talent acquisitions on their profiles. So this is another angle how to look for relevant people and you will find more relevant people which might be more exclusive for you and you can have like a better chance actually in approaching face as well because these people will not be uh, used to receiving so many invitations as people with like rich keyword rich profiles. And of course, then you need to go to things like, for example, GitHub, let's say of the social media, you can search GitHub like this. You don't need to have account 
there, but the sourcing jobs doesn't uh, doesn't actually end up here because even here when you do the search on uh, on GitHub over over Google, you need to play for example with the location because location on GitHub is actually a plain text. It's not uh, it, it's not standardized field. So I need to use things like Prague, Praha, PRG, Czech, Czechia, Česká, Česko, or just people without any location but with .cz domain on their GitHub profiles. This is the proper way how to do the search uh, actually correctly and properly. And when we go even further from social, from LinkedIn social media, from GitHub, and we are going to the rest of the cyberspace, we can call it this way, we can search for any profile. Yeah, we can search for any profile, whether your the profile of the candidate is uh, on a company's profile, for example, etc. One way to do that is over images. So I can put there Python software developer, for example, and I'm searching Google images with a type of image face. So most of these uh, links here are actually some profiles, but non not necessarily on social media, somewhere else. So this is another way how to discover some other profiles. By the way, this uh, shortcut, this tool will do you this in, uh, instead of like going into uh, Google settings to put their type of image face. All right, uh, let's go to recruitment automation. Yeah, normally you would probably imagine robot like that. Uh, usually robots are more like software. This was actually recently my desk where I have different robots on different computers doing different things in different countries. Uh, now it's easier because there are some other tools where I could merge it actually into one computer. But there are simple things like this, which we can also call it automation. Our people uh, use it at Good Call. It's a plugin, Magical, uh, where you can simply put shortcuts and you can put under the shortcut, for example, a LinkedIn invitation or LinkedIn message, anything like that. So you can imagine how many uh, how many invites, etc. You need to send every day. This can send you. Uh, this can save you actually quite a lot of time. Uh, with our ATS, we use a plugin. So our ATS is connected with LinkedIn this is also saving quite a lot of time because you can directly see if that person is in your database and other things uh, when we go to more really like automation automation things uh, I sometimes call it like transhumanism sourcing transhumanism where without this tool you have just some capability you have only some uh, number of invites you can send every day etc when you kind of apply this tool into your processes, you will be, let's say, more efficient sourcer because you will be able to do interview while there are uh, people uh, being sent by your, uh, by your recruitment invitation on LinkedIn because it's done by a robot. So it can look like this, where there is some invitation uh, being written on, on LinkedIn, including, for example, customization like name, position, role, industry. So you can say, I noticed that you work for this industry, but nobody's touching the keyboard. Yeah. This is being done uh, on autopilot by a robot. Yeah. For this task, uh, for example, I recommend this tool, uh, LinkedIn Helper, uh, which is maybe a little bit scary tool, like a black desktop tool but it works really well and you can as you can see for example you can set up those variables so those inv invites really looks personificated and finally extreme engagement because sometimes candidates uh, doesn't respond to us or to me uh, for me this already starts with the searching phase because as I said when you are able to search people who will be more unique for you and also you will be more unique for them because they don't receive so many invites because they don't have keyword rich profile easy to find you will you will automatically uh, better your uh, better your response rate but of course when you need to use something more uh, unlike for example as I said in IT recruitment it's kind of a reverse, a reverse tinder yeah, uh, where those IT guys simply doesn't rep uh, respond to us uh, they then try to change on tinder and that's the uh, vice versa situation um, you can for example in incorporate some things like videos with uh, other members, as Johnny, for example, mentioned, 
hiring is everyone's job. So why not to take a senior backend developer who will actually do a one minute 48 second message uh, for the other developers about what this job is all about, which frameworks, da 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 da. You as a sourcer use this video instead of some like classic description of the, uh, of the, of the role and you are sending this video as you can see in this company to when actually they got 59% response rate which if you do IT it's it's really nice response rate yeah. so not only hiring manager but other colleagues might be incorporated into that as well of course when you want to do something more hardcore you can do one-on-one -on -one message as uh, Marketa here uh, created a message for Jacob with a tool we uh, with a plugin actually called loom or you can use story express as well and you can do one-on-one -on -one message where for example based on marketer's numbers uh, she is able to reach on average 70 percent which is really good yeah? so when you know that you are going against the odds of filling the role because you know the numbers i need to approach over 300 people to get that one higher but there are only 50 people on the market in the city or something like that you need to do something extreme this might be one of the things which in reality are uh, is not so extreme yeah, it's a question of using one plugin or you can do let's say pair certificated images on scale so uh, you can send a message which you can do with any of the LinkedIn robotic tools uh, but there is also a picture where as you can see in the picture there is name of the person and there is picture of the person but of course, each LinkedIn user will, will receive a different, different picture. Uh, this can be done with a tool called Hyperize. The Hyperize can be connected with LinkedIn Helper. So in the library, you choose a picture or you can create your own picture. Yeah, there are, fantasy has no boundaries there. You can create your own picture. Uh, I selected this one. Uh, I selected the distribution channel, which is LinkedIn Helper. You can use MailChimp, but the question is if you have like a MailChimp database with a name, surname and everything think you need for that. So we use LinkedIn Helper which is connected to LinkedIn. Uh, it generates the link. I use the link in that uh, LinkedIn Helper and as you can see it already integrated the picture into LinkedIn Helper. And I can start sending messages, robotic messages, not just with the text but there will be also the picture attached to that. I will start the campaign right here then it will look like this, for example. Yeah, this is a one developer, actually my schoolmate. So again, the picture and his first name, last name is incorporated into that picture. All right, so just to conclude on this uh, presentation, as you can see, like the, the success in recruitment is sometimes more than in the things like deep learning, machine learning, uh, artificial intelligence. In, in the basic things, still in the basic things, doing them properly. Uh, we mentioned LinkedIn several times in these two presentations. I still believe that LinkedIn is the greatest revolution since we founded LinkedIn for recruitment. Yeah? Uh, we cannot say, I can show you, of course, PMIs, recognized images, etc. But we don't use it on everyday basis. It's not crucial uh, to, the, to the success. Even if, of course, I don't know if you heard about technologies like DALI, Midjourney, and others, uh, which are tools where you can say, these pictures are actually generated by artificial intelligence based on what you said. So you can say, hey, give me um, some knight on a horse, uh, so it looks like from 1920, da 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 Yeah, you can create such a prompt, and from that text, these images are created. So they are now artists, and they don't pay the images. They create the images by creating these prompts, and there are whole communities just exchanging these prompts, creating different images yeah. so it's I would say a big evolution in this in this space as well as you can generate AI people these people these people don't exist you can say I want age sex uh, uh, eye color uh, this uh, hair color and it will generate you a person which you can use for example for some particular thing so for example in China there is the virtual anchor Xin Shua he looks like a real person. He's not a real person. He's just served by a text and he's doing uh, the, the news on Chinese TV. And no one cares. Yeah. 
maybe nobody, nobody, someone doesn't even know that it's artificial person. Now there are technologies like uh, Synthesia where you can actually clone yourself. You can literally clone your face and create a video just by supplying a text to the video and it will create video with your face. As well as you can clone your voice. There are more tools for that uh, Unreal uh, Engine or Lyrebird where you can clone your voice. Then you can just type the text and the text is written, uh, is, is uh, rendered uh, with your own voice. Of course, it got mistakes. Yeah, even the AI, when you say, okay, AI, give me muffins yeah, but, uh, or cupcakes. And as you can see in this picture, the Chihuahua dog couldn't be recognized from the, from the muffin. That's all for me. Thank you very much.